Hi, everybody. I'd like to tell you a number to start. A number is 1,391. This number is really important to me. This is the number of days that I have run every day. Five kilometers every day. That's three and a half years. That's longer than Forrest Gump. <laughs> he only ran three years, two months, and 14 days. <laughs> I'm Forrest Gump. Let me tell you how it all began. I'm not an athlete. I'm not an Olympian. I'm just Vanessa. That's Vanessa on the right there. When I was at high school, 13 years old, back in 1983, I grew up in a small town in New Zealand called Matamata. It's famous now. You know Matamata. You don't know you know Matamata, but you do. It's Shire in Lord of the Rings. I grew up in Shire. On the left is my friend Caroline. We both grew up in Shire, in Matamata. At the end of high school, I came to Japan as an exchange student, and we kind of lost touch. How many of you have lost touch with your high school friends? But then suddenly, 20 years later, through social media and Facebook, I got a message from Caroline. And Caroline said to me, I saw on Facebook today that you went for a run, and you got really energized. And that was inspiring for me, because I've been feeling down. And you've inspired me to try to get energized again, to go out and try to fight one of the biggest battles I have right now. That battle for Caroline was cancer. She had just been diagnosed with breast cancer. I had not seen Caroline for 20 years, and I get a message from her. So you know what I did? I typed back to her, and I said, you know what? If me running inspires you to go fight cancer, that's what I'll do. I'll run. I'll run every damn day until you're done, until you're finished. And that's what I've been doing. So Caroline and I went back and forth, and we decided, what does running actually mean? You know, like going down to the end of the street and coming back is not running. So we decided it was five kilometers, that's about three miles, and it's outdoors. Treadmills don't count. Ellipticals don't count. Because they're easy, and cancer is not easy. And so I started running. I started running for the pink ribbon. And that's what I've been doing for 1,391 days. But along the way, I started to learn some things, and I want to share with you the things that I've learned over 1,391 days. Many people ask me, you're so busy, you have kids, you have a job, it's Tokyo. How can you run every day? This is the first learning I have. If it's important to you, you will find a way. Otherwise, you will find an excuse. You can find a way, or you can find an excuse. It's really up to you. And now I had the motivation to find a way. I had to find 45 minutes to an hour every day to run. Now, in my job, I travel a lot, which means that sometimes I have to come to Haneda Airport really early in the morning to catch a flight. I've run at 4 a.m. If you look up here, I've run at 4 a.m. in October last year, April, and again just recently in June, 4 a.m. No matter how many times I run at 4 a.m., it's not easy. People seem to think, oh, she did it last month, it'll be okay. It's not easy. And this is another learning that I have. People who are fighting through cancer and they have chemotherapy and it's the second or the third or the fourth time, just because they've done it the second or the third or the fourth time, doesn't mean it's any easier. It's not easy, especially when it's eight degrees. And I've also run at Haneda Airport between flights. Huh. The taxi unchans, they're like, what's she doing? <laughs> but I've run. The other thing is that I run every day, and I live near Yoyogi Park, and so I could run around Yoyogi Park, around and around and around Yoyogi Park. 1,391 days, that would get really boring. So what I've also learned is that you take the ordinary, the things that are ordinary in your day, and if you just change them a little bit, a cosplay, 
The one in the middle is of what we call the Mombran Running. Mombran. Right? We found all the great Mombran places in Tokyo, and we ran, and we ate, and we ran, and we ate, and we ran. We ate, ran 20 kilometers, because you have to work off all those calories. When Star Wars came out, we had a friend who mapped the face of Yoda. It took us three and a half hours to run this. <laughs> but when you hit the button, the stop button, and it says, hey, here's your course, you're like, oh my god, we ran Yoda. My learning is that you can take the ordinary, and just with a little bit of effort, you can make it extraordinary. So why don't we take the little bit of the time? As I said, that I, I run around Yoyogi Park, and these are some photographs. I know they're very hard to see, but these are some photographs from Yoyogi Park that I've picked up. Top right is a father alongside a child as he is trying to learn to ride a bicycle. You have blind runners that are being aided. You have a dog that's got the cart because it can't use its legs any longer. And the weather, the weather supports you. Great days. Support comes in so many different forms. You may think that you don't know how to support somebody, but actually you do because it might be a donation, it might be your time, it might just be a message. And that's another the learning that I've had from running, is that support comes in so many different forms. And so we all need to think about that. The other thing I've learned, too, is that support comes in waves. When I first started running, everybody was like hitting the e-near button, the like button. After 1,000 days, they're like, oh. <laughs> there she is again. <laughs> but when we create milestones, we drag people back in. Today's day 500. Today's breast cancer day. People will come again. And I imagine people who have long sicknesses, like ALS, like cancer, like depression, get a lot of support at the beginning, but then it wanes. And so how about we create milestones to create that support again? Because that's important. And then there are things that you want to support you, and then they just don't. On the right is some earphones that are supposed to stay in my ears as I run and support me with music. They don't. How many of you have been running and the earphones is keeping you? You spend so much time putting the earphones back in. I call these things quitters. They're quitting on you. When socks get too floppy and they're not around your ankle any longer, and they fall into your shoe and you're spending all the time. These are quitter socks. Get rid of them. That's my learning. Quickly recognize the quitters. These might be people. This might be a job. It's things that don't live up to the promise. And it's really good to get rid of those quitters quickly. Another learning. Snow. Snow and heavy rain. These are also things that I've been through. And people are always wondering, do you run in the snow? Snow is not that bad, actually. It's the ice the next day. But here's what I've learned, is I look out the window and I see the snow, or I look out the window and I see the rain, and I think, oh, I won't run yet. Maybe I will. No, maybe I won't. And if I wait for the perfect conditions, it'll never get done. There's never always the 100% perfect conditions. And so you just need to go. And the other learning I've had is, it just can't rain forever. It'll stop raining. And then when it does stop raining, Another learning is that if you're constantly looking down, you won't be able to see the rainbow. And so I encourage everybody to look up and see the positives, because you will see the rainbows. And that's the learning that I've also had. And if I put that all together, I've really learned that I can choose my attitude. You know, on Monday, it was really hot this week. And I did a run in the hot, the heat. On Tuesday, it was raining. I loved the rain, because I was comparing it to yesterday. I chose my attitude. Rain is good. So I encourage all of us to think about what attitude we want in life. And this is a picture, I know it's very hard to see, but this is what, what I do on my Facebook to sort of put up to Caroline. Today I ran, and this is what I learned. This is at a traffic light. I think it's actually in Daikanyama area. And there was these little um, sparrows. And I took a photo, and it was a crappy photo, so I another photo, this photo, and I'm looking at it from all angles to try to understand it. And I think that's something that I learned that day, was that maybe we should take some time to see things from multiple angles. Sometimes we just see it from the one angle. 
But if we can try to look at it from multiple angles, we get a deeper understanding of the beauty of the things that are there. So these are the learnings that I have. That's Caroline on the right with a bunch of friends on day 1,000. She flew to Tokyo here to run Kokyo, Kokyo debut <laughs> with us. These are the people who are supporting us. In over 1,391 days, what I really learned is that life teaches. We just need to be open to learning from it. We can learn from it every damn day. And I've been lucky to have been given this opportunity to run for Caroline, raise money for breast cancer, but to learn every day. People often ask me, what's next, as we try to outrun cancer? Well, what's next is day 1,392. But when people ask me this, what they really are asking is when Caroline gets better, fully better, and she's doing really well. She's just on the last stages now of her, her treatment, and, her, and so that's going to be great. But what they're really asking is when Caroline is better, will you keep running, Vanessa? And you know what? I don't know the answer. It's hard to run every day. I ran today before I came here, because I know there's an after party. <laughs> but what I do know is that I started running for her, but now I'm kind of running for me. And that's been a big life learning for me. So thank you very much. That's my story.